Look, it's not called Mega Man V. I know they didn't even try to teach you Roman numerals in school, but that's a 5. It can get a little confusing because on the NES Mega Man games, the box art used the Arabic numbers, but the title screens used the Roman numerals. But in general, when we use the Roman numerals in the title of a Mega Man game, we're referring to the Game Boy games, not the NES ones. In Japan, the Game Boy series was known as Rockman World, which makes it a little easier to tell the difference between the NES games and the Game Boy ones. This is an important consideration to make because Mega Man 1, 2, 3, and 4 on the Game Boy were sort of kind of like remakes of the original NES games. They used the same uh, level, not quite design, but the level ideas, the same bosses, the same weapons, etc. Mega Man 5 actually represents the first entirely new newly original game in the Game Boy series. It was developed by a company called Miniguchi Engineering for Capcom. They were the ones responsible for Mega Man 1, 3, 4, and 5 on the Game Boy. 2 was done by a different company and they kind of did a botched job of it. It's, it's not quite uh, up to the standards of the other four games. Um, 5 represents a totally original game and represents the height of Miniguchi's skills as a game, company, game designing company. Uh, interesting note here, watch uh, Mega Man uh, he's going to fire a couple regular shots, but then when he fires the power booster, a little interesting bit of continuity, you'll notice he jumps backwards here. Uh, that was a twist in Mega Man 4 for the Game Boy. Firing a fully charged power buster would, would uh, result in a little bit of kickback, and it, it added some depth to the game. It's a really interesting change, and it's a, it's a shame it didn't stick around. Anyway, in case you're actually interested in the story of this game, it's a little different than what we're used to. Wily's out of the picture, and instead we have these alien robot masters traveling to Earth and running amok. Because of their superior alien technology, Mega Man's power buster has no effect. So in order to combat these star droids, as they're known, Dr. Light invents a new weapon. Instead of the power buster, Mega Man is equipped with the Mega Arm. It basically works the same, but it shoots out Mega Man's fist in order to punch the guys instead of shooting them with some kind of energy blast. There's a few advantages to the Mega Arm. One being that you can hit enemies on the rebound as Mega Man's fist returns to his wrist. Kind of silly, but it works in practice. The main disadvantage is it's just too powerful. Like a lot of the later classic Mega Man games, a fully charged shot is too powerful and tends to overshadow all the other weapons that Mega Man acquires during the course of the game. I won't be avoiding the Mega Arm completely in this playthrough. It does have its advantages and it's useful in several situations, but I will be minimizing its use. Here's a good shot of Mega Man using the power arm. Uh, with that, we'll get to the first video shortly. Uh, in the meantime, enjoy the title screen.